Critics are divided over Joker. Some see the film as an artful portrayal of a man's descent into insanity, but many say the film empathizes with the lone shooter as a victim of circumstances and then elevates him to an iconic vigilante. One of those critics is George Mason University film professor May Santiago. She calls Warner Brothers Studio and filmmaker Todd Phillips' decision to make such a film irresponsible after a slew of mass shootings in the country by men exhibiting behaviors similar to that of the Joker. It's been less than a month since our last mass shooting by a white man, you know. That's just the society we live in, and until gun laws start changing and there's more of a monumental shift in American society, we should be defensive. Enough from the clown! <laughs> DC, Warner Brothers, this has to be a joke, right? Like, this can't be the reality I'm currently living in. I mean, the first thing I know is that after the success of the Christopher Nolan Dark Knight trilogy, Zack Snyder being the untalented nitwit he is, pitched out a disappointing Superman movie which sucked far worse than it had any right to be, and worst of all, creating two of the worst superhero movies imaginable that should never be brought up in any conversation ever again. The other films in the DC Cinematic Universe, however, that being Suicide Squad, Wonder Woman, and Aqua Bro, have failed to impress me or change my mind, to say the least. But after the clever and humorous turn that was Shazam, you seem to be steering down a virtuous path towards redeeming yourself. But wait just a minute, because as of lately right now, the suspension keeps on rising. Because Todd Phillips, yes, the same guy responsible for creating the unforgettable masterwork of the Hangover trilogy has the balls to go out and create a standalone revisionist origin story without any connection to the DCEU, and thank God for that. Featuring Joaquin Phoenix to characterize and perform as one of the most idolized and infamous villains in all of media. That being Batman's arch nemesis, the Joker. But as soon as I was about to give up on all humanity, then came the reviews and the accolades. Joker wins Golden Lion at the Venice Film Festival, heavily praised at the Toronto International Film Festival. Everything was put in the film's court, but simultaneously, there came the controversy. Joker is too dark, bleak, and violent. It will inspire mass shootings, inspire incel. It's irresponsible of the highest order. But as usual, when I happen to come across pointless controversy like this, even when talking about a DC film, I take it upon myself to check the film out to see if A, it's worth every single praise it gets, and B, if it's another middling DC film that fails to impress me aside from Shazam. But before I start, I will agree with the bloggers on one single condition. Joker was dark, bleak, and a bit violent. But you know what? It was so freaking awesome! Joker is no laughing matter, and I say this in a good way, because I cannot believe I'm saying this, but this may be one of the best films of the year. Seriously, I've seen this movie twice already, and I still had this film stuck to my head ever since I left the cinema. From the outset, what lies within Joker in terms of the plot is that it's centered around the perspective of Arthur Fleck, a mentally deficient man who works on his daily odd job as a clown, lives with his mother played by Frances Conroy, and has aspirations of being a highly respected comedian, much like his talk show host inspiration, Murray Franklin, played by the great Robert De Niro. But once a moment in his life goes horrifically, violently, and unexpectedly arrive, he descends into a spiral of madness and torment as he transforms throughout life from Arthur Fleck into the villain we know today as the Joker. First things first, you cannot go into this film without mentioning the one thing that makes this film much more surprisingly awesome than any of us would expect when it comes to a movie like this. That is none other than Walking Phoenix as Arthur Fleck. The character of the Joker has been interpreted, performed, and brought up to the big screen for years, if not decades, by multiple actors. Like Cesar Romero, who I remembered watching as a kid with Adam West as Batman, Jack Nicholson, and even the standout performance of a man who passed away but still brought home the Oscar gold in his grave, with Heath Ledger's unforgettable performance. And between the both of us, let's pretend that Jared Leto's Joker never happened, okay? Okay. However, in the case of Joaquin Phoenix's method acting of becoming the character of Arthur Fleck, this is a damn near sensational turn for the actor in almost every single aspect. His performance is beyond and unlike anything you can see as of this year, as he performs with a mixture of sympathy, 
creepiness and madness from the way he behaves from the way he interacts with people interrupting in inappropriate laughter due to his neurological condition it feels so remarkably and frighteningly believable that i perfectly understand the oscar buzz that this man is receiving it is a truly groundbreaking performance that no one will ever forget for ages there are other strong performances that also help levitate the film as well from Frances Conroy, who delivers a very credible job as Arthur's mom, who she herself plays a very significant role into Arthur's life, including a huge shift in the story that I wasn't expecting at all, and Robert De Niro, of course, doing what he does best in the role of Murray Franklin, who thankfully redeemed himself after the abhorrent role he was involved with in Dirty Grandpa. What I also love about Joker is the style of Todd Phillips' direction. One of the more smartest decisions that set Todd Phillips' version away from the other film's counterparts is that it takes a unique direction deviating from the source material, like how Christopher Nolan did it in the Dark Knight trilogy, into an organic formula, and at the same time, taking a bit of inspiration from Martin Scorsese films, specifically Taxi Driver and King of Comedy. Both films centered around narcissists trying to make things better for the world, while also making things worse in the aftermath. When he applies his direction into the story, it's fairly well executed because this film is practically a character study the same way that Logan was a character study. It's also due to the fact that Gotham City itself plays a huge part in our main character's psyche through Fleck's descent into pure insanity and anger. We see him going through constant struggles in his life, being bullied and harassed, being teased by upper class folk in Gotham City, constantly rejected by society. I'm not gonna do the meme. Seriously, I'm not gonna do it. That throws him under the bus like worthless pond scum. When the events surrounding the environments change, the character changes along with them. And you spend most of the time empathizing with him to make sure that he strays away from the darkness and embraces the goodness of his own humanity. But unfortunately, as the film goes along, it unfortunately gets worse for him. Because as soon as he snaps into the Joker, you are left with anticipation and concern for what may transpire. The soundtrack is wickedly eerie with its use of violins, matching up with scenes with such quality and horror that it leaves your skin crawling up your spine. And much like the direction taking inspiration from Martin Scorsese, the cinematography is about as haunting as you can get in terms of aesthetic and visual presentation. You get swooping and wide shots of Gotham City, capturing the griminess and the dirty aesthetic of the city. Even gracious shots like him dancing on the stairs in slow motion. And there was one scene towards the film's denouement that made me lower my jaw into pure astonishment. And it will remain stuck to my head until the end of the year. If there are any slight miscues that inhabit this film, however, it would have to do with the on-the-nose and not-so-subtle foreshadowing and illogical nitpicks that I have with the film that prevent it from being an absolute triumph. In the subject of foreshadowing, you have to set up scenes with certain hints and clues that indicates what is being projected on screen and how it could happen in the future. But there are some scenes that are just way too obvious, especially for first-time viewers. Whenever you hear the song Send In The Clowns by Harvard graduates who constantly tease and mock Arthur Flex's uncontrollable laughter in a subway, it's a tiny bit unsettled in terms of setting up moments that could eventually happen that just doesn't get executed to a perfect degree. There are a few other nitpicks that I have with the film, particularly ones that have to do with scenes that solely exist just for other things to happen, like people not locking their doors when they should. But other than those faults, there is literally nothing that stands in this film's way for being a particularly magnificent display. Hey look, that rhyme. Joker is a traumatically tremendous upgrade from DC's new era of comic book films, subverting expectations that make the viewer know what it's like to dive into the mind of a madman, more so than watching Tarsem's The Cell. We need more movies like Joker, not only to inspire, but to captivate us, to inspire us, and to make us think how such a film like this could change the superhero and filmmaking landscape, much like Avengers Endgame this year. As you can Perfectly see, aside from a few missteps, Joker made me smile and put on a happy face. Alright guys, so that is my review of Joker. If you like this review, please like it and comment below let me know what you thought of the film. You can also find me on media outlets such as Facebook, Twitter, and if you have a phone, find me on Instagram. And as always, if you'd like to see more reviews like this, be sure to subscribe for more. DC, you've done it again. My name is Luke Newcomb. And you have flown away.